guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, our plants are in the background. They're actually looking a little bit better than usual, simply because it is autumn now. And what that means is that it's colder. That's why they're looking better, because it is colder. And um, yeah, that's the thing with um, when I'm staying here in Australia, it is extremely hot. The plants just don't survive during the summertime. Very sad, but more on that later. In this video, we are gonna be looking at the insides of a carnivorous plant's stomach. So as you guys have seen from some of the clips, these plants eat bugs and they eat a lot of bugs. But the one plant that eats a lot of bugs are Saracenia. Otherwise, these really tall plants right here that I'm showing you right now. Now, the thing about them is that they eat so much food, like so many insects, that they actually topple over sometimes. However, our plants, as you can tell, are not looking that great. They're not the happiest. And literally something keeps eating them. There must be a caterpillar somewhere that keeps eating them. Every caterpillar I find, I take it somewhere else. I give it to a friend of mine who lives somewhere else and she makes them in, grows them into butterflies and whatever. But every time I find them, I deal with it and I just don't know what's happening. So the specific picture that we will be looking at is one that is like the only picture that this plant has produced this season caught heaps of bugs um, but it ended up getting destroyed because of the heat now there is one next to it that is like the newest one I guess that also got destroyed but it got eaten by caterpillars and I will show you that one too you can actually see the insects inside but I won't be cutting that one off because it's like the only one that's half alive um, that actually has food in it so that it can actually digest that food unless if I cut it now you know it's gonna lose all that foods nutrition but yeah guys let us go get the trap that I'm talking about and let's open it up. All right guys, so this is the picture that I just told you is like the, one of the only ones that has been developed this season. You know, apart from one of these small little ones here that is slightly deformed and this one is very deformed for whatever reason. Um, oh, look at that one there. We actually do have one developing for this plant. The rhizomes do look good, but you know, they just can't develop because when they do, they get eaten by stuff, you see? But yeah, this is the one that looks good that I'm not going to be cutting up now because I want the insects inside to be digested. But you can actually see right here are some carcasses of insects, like flies or whatever else. Honestly, not sure what's in there. There's a moth there. But deep inside, I have no idea. And that's what we will be doing with this huge pitch over here. This one must have caught hundreds of different bugs. So let me get the scissors out and let's uh, cut it open to see what's inside. All right, guys, here is our Saracenia. As you can see, these are probably like the only traps at this level and the rest are kind of destroyed. But this one here, this really big one, let's just follow it down. This is the one which we will be cutting off. So let me just readjust and cut it off right here oh okay well before we do that i have no idea what's going on here with this i've never seen something like this before guys so this one that I'm cutting off, see how it's like split into two, but one goes down into the rhizome on that side, and the other half comes down into the rhizome on that side. And like, it's attached on both sides. So the only thing that comes to mind as to what has caused this is that the rhizome, there was a normal stem like this, the rhizome in between the stem grew and cause it to open up like that. That is literally the only thing that I can think of that may have caused a split like that. So that might be something new for you, carnivorous plant growers. Um, I've never ever heard of this or seen it before, but I guess the rhizome right in the middle of this leaf in the past started growing and swelling and caused it to open up. And that's why there's so much new growth here. But yeah, guys, that's, that's uh, pretty interesting. Anyway, let's cut it off. Okay, so 
let's put the plant aside and let's take a look at this leaf now as you some of you guys may may or may not know is that saracenias are pitchers they have these long traps like this these leaves at the top are generally colorful and have nectar secreted on them and that nectar attracts the plants they slip on the hairs yeah basically they drink you guys can see there's hairs they're quite slippery the plants drink the nectar and they become basically drunk and then they slip and fall inside of this mouth here of this, this pitcher and if you don't know this pitcher is actually the leaf of the plant so this is actually a leaf but yeah i can feel that the plant's bug level is about here so the rest is fooled up so let me readjust the cameras i'll bring you back in a second okay guys so here's our pitcher and we're just going to cut it right down the middle And there is where the bug starts. So let's open it up. Wow, guys, look at all that. That's literally all just flies. And this goes all the way down, guys. Let's try and open this up a bit more. You guys ready? Oh, wow. Look at that, guys. It's like a little sausage. That's disgusting. Look at that huge one there, that big blue one there. Wow. And you know, as these plants um, eat, these bugs literally form this little cylinder because they get stuck inside the trap. They literally slide down and then make a cone, you know, the same size or shape as the plant itself and they just literally just struggle there until they eventually pass away and then as they decompose the plant itself secretes enzymes and eats them up and you can see how far they actually do go down and you see more towards the bottom you guys can see it's more liquid because that's all the digestive enzymes that the plant secretes is all it's literally like you know, if it goes into your stomach, this is literally like the stomach of the plant, you know? But yeah, you guys can see, it's all like wet and watery down here. That's all nutritious soup that the plant is sw swallowing up. But yeah, this guy eats a lot of bugs, as you can tell. And that's, that's what makes these guys such efficient catches, is that they can eat so many. Unlike a Venus flytrap, which, which usually eats like one at a time, these guys eat... So this could easily be like a hundred bugs right here guys and if the plant didn't die beforehand because of the heat it would be full to the top with different types of bugs so yeah like i said super efficient they attract them with the leaf they slide down they fall they can't climb back up because the inside of this leaf if you guys could only feel this it literally feels like wax if you guys have wax paper at home that you might use for baking or something that's exactly what it feels like. It's it's literally like waxy. And I'm feeling that here. And the leaf actually, you know, when you unroll it, it's pretty big. But it feels just like wax. And that means that any insect that falls inside of this trap, they actually can't get out because it's so slippery. And they can't fly out either because, you know, when it is actually rolled up, there's not enough space. Flowers need to get their wings buzzing and they need to jump to be able to fly. What will happen is that they'll buzz, buzz, buzz. They'll try to jump and just hit the other side of the trap. So they'll jump from like there to there. Just hit it and then fall further down and then get wedged, you know, so far down inside of here that they, they can't even start buzzing their wings anymore. And they just literally just struggle. And if they go down far enough, literally drown and die. Now, there's another thing about these um, plants, which you may find in literature, and that is that these leaves, they all have downward pointing hairs. Now I cannot get it on camera and I can't see them, 
maybe it's specifically this plant, but they are downward pointing hairs in the leaves. And what those downward pointing hairs do is basically like, you know, reticulated pythons have the hairs that point, I mean, their teeth point inwards so that the little mouse that it catches whatever can't go back out. It can only go into the stomach of the python. It's the exact same thing with the hairs that these plants grow. So that the bugs come down and they get stuck. They try to walk backwards, but the hairs force them to, you know, stay where they are or go forward, which is further down. And this plant has adopted that same reticulated, you know, methodology, I guess, of catching prey, just like a snake does. Very, very cool. And you can obviously see it works really well. Heaps of different bugs in here. This plant is obviously not struggling for food, although it is struggling because of the heat. But yeah, guys, this is the inside of the stomach of a carnivorous plant, specifically a Saracenia hybrid. Hope you guys found this interesting let me put the plants away and talk a little bit more about growing these plants and a little bit more about um the usa because like i said i'll be keeping you guys updated on our move there so let's get that started okay guys as you can see the plants in the background are enjoying some afternoon sun very warm obviously in the sun today is actually a really good day it's like the first day in like literally weeks that we have had sunlight and not just consistent rain i mean it did rain last night it probably rained tonight but yeah, like it's actually a sunny day. So we're gonna have, what do you guys call a barbecue? Um, but yeah, as you guys can tell, the plants like sunlight and that is how you need to grow your Venus flytraps or all well, them too, your Saracenias. They need as, basically as much sunlight as you can give them. They love sunlight. They literally love it so much. They need direct, like pure direct sunlight. Um, on top of that, they need to be sitting in water. That's why I have this weird table here which is for sale, by the way, I am uh, looking at moving to the USA. So if you want this table, when I move the table with the roof, the whole table, everything, there's also a bottom layer with its own level and pond liner. So it's actually a double level table. It is for sale. Um, if you want to reserve it, let me know. And when I move to the USA, obviously it's yours. I'm selling it for $650. So just being upfront with it. I did put more, oh, like over a thousand bucks into it, but I'm happy to give it to someone who will look after their plants for 650. So yeah, back to the plants. I need to be sitting in water, which is why I have the table, as much sun as possible and just protect them from heavy rains and stuff. That's literally all there, there is to them. The water needs to be rainwater, distilled water, or reverse osmosis water. That's the only difficult bit, but other than that, let them sit in water 24 seven. Very, very easy to actually grow these plants. Now guys, like I said, and I've just mentioned, the USA, right? So like I've told you guys, there's the three states that I'm looking at that I most, will most probably be going to California, um, South Carolina, or Georgia. Now, um, I'm pretty much settled on choosing one of those three. I haven't specifically chosen one of the three. Most likely will be South Carolina because you know, it's the birthplace of the plants and cost of living and all that stuff. And it will be really great for these plants because that's where they're native to, like literally that's where Venus flytraps and Saracenias are native to and whatnot. So yeah, and it's cold enough for Highland Nepenthes, cold enough for um, our temperate plants in winter, not too cold, not too hot in the summer. So yeah, honestly guys, it looks, it looks like what everything I'm looking for in terms of an environment for the plants. So yeah, just need to get a visa guys. So if anyone knows of anything about visas or something, um, yeah, give like chat to me. We are looking at different options of visas. We're exploring different things. I am still going for job interviews there in the USA. Um, it's very difficult to do, you know, with the time difference and whatnot, but yeah, just need to get a visa to get there permanently because I can get there temporarily very easily like on a, on a visitor visa or something, but I want to go there forever. So yeah, anyway, guys, a little bit of an update on those plans. If there's any specific video you guys want from me, please let me know. I will be updating you guys on our tuberous drosera next weekend because they are starting to all come out the ground. All of the rarer ones, like the rupee colas and whatnot, well, not so rare, but they're all coming out the ground and it'll actually look pretty good in about a week's time. So ensure that you don't miss that video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you have any questions, Facebook me, Instagram me, leave a comment here. You want some videos from me, let me know. Anything, guys, um, that you need from me, let me know. And yeah, guys, I'll see you guys in the next episode.